Hi, everybody. Welcome to Shoshana Rose Radio Program. I'm delighted that you tuned in today. I'm your host and your friend, Ann Finkelman. We have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man of God today. His name is Nick Panico, but he's a bishop, he's an apostle, he's a prophet, he's a pastor, and he's an evangelist. And I'm delighted to bring him to you. I'm delighted to know he and his beautiful wife, Ellie. And uh, next time we have them on, hopefully Ellie can join us. Amen. Some of you are asking how we find you, Ann. Where are you, Annie girl? Well, I'm on Facebook, Ann Finkelman. You can find us at our official web sh uh, website, shoshanaministries.net, www.shoshanaministries.net, S-H-O-W-S-H-A-N-N-A-H, ministries.net. And you can connect with me that way. You want to sow a financial seed? Have at it. God will bless you. This is good ground. It's a messianic prophetic ministry. You all know. You watch all the time. And I'm so glad you spend time with us. I'm glad that you take time out of your busy life to spend with this little girl and her beautiful guest that God sends. Amen. And so without further ado, go to PayPal. The Lord said, tell him, go to PayPal. So he wants you to sow. Amen. Small gift, big gift, whatever you want to do. It's unto the Lord, not unto me to help us go around the world, amen. Hallelujah. Mr. Nick Panico, Bishop Panico, I wanna give you the whole hour. Thank you for coming, man of God. I'm really, I've told you many times and I'll say it publicly, I really, I honor you for not only for what you do, man of God, but for the humility that you carry and the love of God. That's very, that's like Jesus. Anybody that knows Jesus knows he's meek and lowly apart, and we find rest when we're around him. Well, I feel at peace at another level up when I'm around you because you walk with God as well. And thank you for coming. I want you to meet our audience. I want you to speak what's on your heart and let them enjoy the gift of God that, that we're bringing to them today through this program. Amen. 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 Well, I'm delighted to be with you, Ann, and God bless you. Uh, delighted to be with your audience today, yes. and pray that uh, God will uh, bless our time, and uh, why don't we just do that? Just ask the Holy Spirit to anoint our conversation so that uh, yes. what is in his heart will come forth through this broadcast today. So, Father, we just pause a moment right now yes, and Lord. acknowledge your presence, Lord, yes, Lord, for you are here. Yes. You're here with us. Yes. You're here with every viewer that's watching. Yes. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to guide and direct us yes. into the fullness of your purpose. Yes. Lord, there's a there's a reason we're together today. There's something yes. Yes, that's Father. in your heart for your people, Lord. Yes. And so I pray that you would help Ann and I to, to find that place, yes. to walk in that course, to hear your voice, know your will, yes. and speak forth the truth of your love, Lord yes, God. Father. Glorify your name in our time together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen, amen. So uh, let me uh, first just give you a little introduction uh, for those of you who don't know me, and this is your first introduction to me. Yay. Uh, I've been in, uh, uh, in the Clearwater area here <clears throat> since 1983 and uh, came down from Chicago. I, I was uh, born, I was raised in Roman Catholic traditions and then uh, gave my heart to Christ at a full gospel businessmen's meeting mm -hmm. in 1976. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, uh, started attending <clears throat> a Bible teaching church. And that's really where I began uh, to be grounded in my faith. Uh, it was a church that taught that the Bible is truth, that the Bible can be believed from cover to cover that no matter what the translation you're reading from, that it is the truth and that uh, it's God's word to us. And what was written thousands of years ago applies to us today. And, and uh, you know, I, I uh, embraced that. I, I believed it. And then, you know, I, I also read a book that really helped me solidify that. And, and it's a book that I recommend to anybody who's new in the faith, mm -hmm. and it's uh, Josh McDowell's book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Wonderful. Uh, his, uh, Josh did an amazing uh, thesis on the study of, of scriptures and why the scriptures could be believed. He started out as an atheist, trying to tear down Christianity. And so he thought, if I can destroy the validity of the Bible, then I can destroy Christianity. 
And in the middle of his studies of studying the, the archaeological evidences and the internal evidences of scripture and the prophetic utterances that came true, written hundreds of years before, and prophecies that came true exactly as they were written hundreds of years later, he became wholly convinced that the Bible was God's word and he gave his heart to Christ. And that really solidified my faith. So when I approach reading the Bible, I believe it to be God's word. Yes. I'm looking for God to speak to me every yes. time. Yes. And, and that's something that I just would yes. pause to say. Praise God. The attitude of your approach to the scripture uh, will have a big difference in what you receive from it. If you come with humility of heart and say, Lord, would you talk to me today? Lord, speak to me through your word. And then begin to read and open up your heart and your spirit. And then just begin to read the word of God. And I promise you, those words on the page, there's going to come a moment in time when all of a sudden it changes from the written logos word of God to the rhema spoken word of God, where now God is speaking to you and into your situation. Lights up. And I learned that uh, early in my Christian walk, and that really helped me. I, I walked with uh, uh, the Lord for uh, uh, about a year and a half, and then crisis came in my life, and, and my brother got sick, and he didn't get healed, and I couldn't theologize that and didn't understand it. And I was in a faith-oriented church that uh, <clears throat> said if, if someone gets sick, and they don't get healed, it's because there's a lack of faith or sin in their life. That's the word of faith teaching. That's and, the error part. And it was, it was. Uh, sin in the camp or not enough faith. They right, started. and they were taking, they were taking some elements of truth, but they were swinging them way to the extreme. And, and so, and in my brother's circumstance, my brother loved the Lord. He, he, that from the day he got saved, he was in Bible study, he was passionate about his relationship with the Lord. I knew it wasn't uh, on behalf of sin in his life. I knew there wasn't some besetting sin. I knew my brother, we lived together. Uh, and then I could understand, well, maybe I didn't have enough faith. Maybe my pastor didn't have enough faith. But we had the PTL club and the 700 club and, and we had any, any healing evangelist that came in town. He had hands laid on him by Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagan and, and, and Freddie Price and all of these people who, who are gifted men of God, mm -hmm. but healing didn't come. And uh, it, it really rattled my faith because there was no room in my theology for that. And, it, and, and, I, and I began to fall away and I, I went into a five year backslide. I just got drawn back into the things that God had delivered me from. And, uh, and then a, a crisis point happened where one of my best friends committed suicide. And it really rattled me. And I, uh, I said, you know, I got to get out of town. I was living up in Chicago at the time. And I had an aunt who lived down here in Florida. And so I called her up. I came down, found a job in a few days, mm -hmm. and told my mom I'm moving to Florida. She said, if you're going, I'm going. And so within a month, we're all down here in Dunedin. And I'm working, and Mom says to me, uh, you're taking me to church on Mother's Day. And I said, okay, Mom. And so we went to this church, and, uh, you know, I, there was no great thing that happened in that church at that moment. But the following week, she was invited to go to a church that was in an office building in downtown Clearwater mm -hmm. called yes. Countryside Christian Center. Oh, those were the early days. The early days of Countryside. Mm. And I in went the 80s, to that, the it, 80s. Yeah, yeah, 83 is when I went. Mm -hmm. uh, the church had started in 81 mm -hmm. in a living room right here in the countryside. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was maybe about 100, 150 people in the church at the time. But that, mm -hmm. uh, that night, um, I went to service and I rededicated my life to the Lord. And I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I've made a mess of my life, but if you want it, you can have the rest of it. Isn't that wonderful? And that that and then I did something that I think was one of the best things I've ever done. I made a commitment that every time the doors of the church were open, I was going to be there. You made a commitment to God. I I, I committed my life to Christ, but I knew that I needed yeah. to be surrounded in an atmosphere of faith and fellowship Praise where I could hear the Praise word. The 
and and the 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 word of god was preached there a countryside the spirit of the lord was strong uh, pastor Lloyd, who was the pastor of the church at the time, mm -hmm. was uh, just, an, uh, just a, a strong God lover, passionate about souls, passionate about mm -hmm. prayer. And it was there that I learned about the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was there that I learned mm -hmm. that God is sovereign and that healing is an act of his mercy. And yes, healing is available, and we can stand in faith, and God responds to our prayers of faith. And as long as there's breath in your body, we can believe God for healing. But we also recognize that God is good and God is sovereign. Yes. And there are some times in God's sovereign plan where the healing that's going to come is when he brings you home to be with him. The work is done. Not everybody, not everybody receives the manifestation of their physical healing here on this side. However, we walk by faith and not by sight, and we allow God to do what's in God's hearts to do in and through us. So we stand, we believe, we pray, and it was there that God just really opened my heart to see some, some more of God that I didn't understand when I was first growing in my faith. I began serving on staff at the church there and, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. started out just helping, just serving. And let me tell you something, friends. If you sense a call to ministry, mm -hmm. if there's something that you really believe in your heart to do, be faithful where God's planted you. That's right. Make yourself available. Servanthood. Yes, just find ways. You know, I, I like to say there's a set of plow handles in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. If you just look, they're there. Mm -hmm. And just start plowing. Just mm -hmm. faithfully serve. I started vacuuming I did and too. cleaning toilets. And Clean taking out the trash and straightening the, trash, the chairs. Picking up cigarette butts on the church grounds because the poor were coming and yeah. they were smoking and we were feeding them yeah. and cleaning toilets and doing whatever your hand finds you to do. Breathing, answering the phone, painting the church, working the soup kitchen. And all the time I would do that, Bishop, I would say, this is for Shoshana Ministries International. This is 37 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is for, Lord, I'm sowing seed for Shoshana. This is all for Shoshana. You didn't get paid for any of it. It right. was unto the Lord. Right. And guess what? Yep. Now I'm reaping the harvest right. and then counting. Absolutely. And so, and so are you. Absolutely. Because I learned Jesus is watching us. That's right. He watches us clean toilets. He watches us serve. He watches everything. It, it's critical. He doesn't forget. Uh, that's, to me, That that's where my, my real training for ministry came in right. serving God's people and being willing to do what some people might consider lowly. Right. Uh, I, you know, I to this day will still get a vacuum out and if I see stuff on the carpet, I'll go and I'll sweep it up because it, to me, it's all about just blessing God's people being a and, and, and loving people by serving them. I, I remember um, there, was, uh, uh, there was a particular person when my primary ministry was the ministry of housekeeping and and maintenance of that, um, that I'd be, I'd be vacuuming the sanctuary every week after Sunday service. And there was a person who sat about three rows back and about halfway in, and they clipped their fingernails every day and would leave a pile of fingernail clippings in the church. On, on the floor under their chair. And, and it really would rattle me. i go, well, how, first of all, how could fingernails grow that fast? And secondly, why would you clip your nails in church? And then leave them on the floor, and I would get—I I would just get angry. And and, and one day I'm—I'm I'm just getting angry, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit, just pulls the reins of my heart back and says, "Look at that ugliness in your heart. Mm -hmm. Look at that anger in your heart. Mm -hmm. Who are you doing this for? Are you doing it for me, or are you doing it for you?" These houses, this anyway. And I, I and I repented. I said, "Lord, forgive me, forgive me, Lord. I'm here to serve you and love you." And I began to sweep up those nails and praise God mm -hmm. and thank God that the person was in church every week and thank God that, that they were willing to hear and listen. And, mm -hmm. and it just changed my whole perspective. Yes. And it helped me to become more effective as God began to open up more doors for me. And yes. I served there for yes. 18 years yes. and became the... Uh, one of the senior associate pastors and mm -hmm. launched many ministries in the church, the singles ministry, divorce mm -hmm. recovery, mm -hmm. uh, single parent ministry. We used to do these big single parent um, 
Christmas parties every year. I remember. Buy the gifts for the kids and help the single parent moms. And I was there a lot. And then, um, and then in uh, 1997, the Lord released me, mm -hmm. and uh, we began uh, looking for churches that needed a pastor. Found a church up in Rockville, Maryland, uh, and they re were ready to call me to be their pastor. And I went away to fast and pray, which. Let me say to you, just because a door is open doesn't mean that God wants you to walk through it. That's right. And it's wise before you make any major decision listen, in life. Listen, listen, listen. Before you accept a ministry opportunity or, or before you sell your house or before you change your church or before you start dating somebody. I mean, I'm talking about... Amazing, you know, just, big decisions mm -hmm. that you have to make in life. Before you buy that car, stop and pray and fast. Mm -hmm. Spend some time alone with the Lord. Shut the rest of the world out so that you can hear his voice because there's so much noise in our world today. We're connected to these phones 24-7. There's, there's the internet. There's, there's the radio and the TV and all of this noise that's constantly around us and it's important that you silence the voices of the world so that you can hear the voice of the spirit and for me one of the things that I do is I'll find a quiet place mm -hmm. sometimes I'll go to a retreat center mm -hmm. for a big decision like this mm -hmm. um, you know I, I went away to fast and pray before I ever thought of leaving countryside and, mm -hmm. And then when this opportunity came, I went away to fast and pray, went down to Christian retreat in Bradenton and, mm -hmm. and just took my Bible and took uh, some worship music. And that's all I had. Mm -hmm. And I committed myself to staying there till I heard the Lord speak. And, and, you, and you heard him. And I did hear him. And have, tell, for the audience, Bishop, that don't know how to hear him, John 10, 27 says, my sheep know my voice and I know them. Exactly. And they, they, they know me and I, they, I know them. <clears throat> they are mine. How would you say to our audience, I know how, you know how, right. how would they hear God? All right. So the one of the most important ways and the most common way that God's going to speak is through his word. That's right. So for me, what I do is I just start out with a time of worship and acknowledging the presence of the Lord, mm -hmm. setting the attitude of my heart. And then, and then confessing, asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, is there any sin? Is there mm -hmm. anything uh, that you're not pleased with? Bring and confess it. Bring to my memory bring, anything. That's right. Any, any, un, any unforgiveness, mm -hmm. any, any sin of omission, something I'm not doing that you want me to do. Mm -hmm. I, I open up my heart. I, I, so I enter into worship and confession. Mm -hmm. And then I ask the Lord, speak to me, God, through your word. Mm -hmm. And I open up the Bible that's and right. I begin to read. And, and sometimes I'll just sit there and I'll say, Lord, where do you want me to read? Mm -hmm. And I'll just clear my mind. And then the Lord will bring a, a book or a passage. Mm -hmm. And I'll just open up and just start reading there. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I might be in a place in my devotional reading and I'll just pick up where I'm at. But I just start reading with a heart of hearing the voice of the Lord. And oftentimes it's through the word. Another way that God speaks, and this is very common, is through the still small voice of the Holy Spirit within you. Mm -hmm. Where you're, you're quieting your soul, you're meditating on the things that you've read, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you hear something in your mind. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the Spirit of God speaking to you, and it'll give you clarity. In the particular instance when I was praying about this mm -hmm. church opportunity up in Rockville, Maryland, mm -hmm. the word that came to me, the Lord said, you don't need to go and fight someone else's demons. Mm -hmm. That's I heard that clearly. Don't take their offense. And and I I, I said, Lord, that, but they're, they, they need, you know, they're looking for someone just like my credentials are. And, 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 all, and God said it again, you don't need to go and fight someone else's demons. And as soon as he said it, I knew in my heart we weren't to go. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, Lord, what now? That looks so good. Yeah. You're a pastor of a well, church. You know, oh my gosh, that I, looked like the perfect opportunity. And not only that, I had four children. 
I had a house. And you need, oh. I, I was helping care for my mother and my brother. So I had a lot of responsibility. Right. I had some severance pay that was carrying right, me, right. but but that was gonna right. end. Right. And so, you know, like any man, I need a job. I need right. to you right. know, need to support his family. I need to support my family. Of course. But but the Lord said, Don't go. And so I said, All right, Lord, well what then? And he said to me, You'll know. And I said, Well, would you like to fill in the blank? He said, you'll know. And you have to wait. And so I, I, I stayed another day just in case he wanted to mm -hmm. give me more information. Mm -hmm. And uh, I woke up in the morning. I spent some time in prayer. Mm -hmm. And again, the Lord said, you'll know. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I had peace and release that I, I, all that I was needed to know at that moment is what I'd received. Mm -hmm. So I called up my wife, and she mm -hmm. came to pick me up. Mm -hmm. When I got into the car, she said to me, what did the Lord say? Mm -hmm. And I said, we're not going to Rockville. And she slapped her hand on the dashboard yeah. and said, I knew we weren't supposed to go. See? But she let you be but she, she needed, she needed, she knew that I needed to hear the voice of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and God had already put that in her heart that we were going to stay in the community. Yeah. And so we prayed on the way home. And by the time we got from Bradenton to Dunedin, which is a little over an hour's drive. Florida. We knew that we were supposed to plant a church in our house in Dunedin. You knew that you knew that you knew. It was beyond the shadow of a doubt. And mm -hmm. it was something that Thanks I never Lord. considered mm -hmm. that I had those particular gifts mm -hmm. to plant a church. Because mm -hmm. I, and one of the big holdbacks was, you know, I, I love to worship, yeah. but yeah. I'm not a worship yeah. leader. Yeah. I have absolutely no musical ability, and so that was one of the things that was a little intimidating to me, but God said that he, he had released me to plant a church so that he could release the vision he had given me for ministry to its fullest extent. And you had trained all those years I, under Pastor Lloyd. 18 years. I served, served faithfully. Mm -hmm. served and, faithfully. And I was loyal to my pastor. Mm -hmm. That's a word for somebody who wants to be in the limelight after two years. It doesn't happen in two years. No. It doesn't happen in five years. It doesn't happen in 10 years. It doesn't happen in 12, 13, 14. It takes years to build your calling in you, especially if you're an apostle or a prophet. Be faithful, serve. Don't look to be in the limelight. Right. God will promote you when it's time, beloved of God. Yes, yeah. he will. Yeah. And yes, he you will. can't be an effective leader until you know how to effectively serve. Because leadership is serving. It absolutely is. And and, yeah. and let me say also yeah. that the seeds you sow while you're serving, yeah. you reap when you're leading. That's right. That's what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. All those years, 40 years you're plus exactly right. that I've served and served. I used to say, like I said, this is Bush Hashanah. I'm scrubbing toilets. This is Bush Hashanah Ministries International. Lord, one day I'm going to be proclaiming who you are. One day I'm going to be your mouthpiece. One day I didn't know anything about the call, about the prophetic call. That I didn't know anything. All I knew was I had a hunger for the word right. and God called me to serve all these leaders without pay. I worked, made money, supported myself, paid my bills, and every time the church was open, I was there. Mm -hmm. Had everybody lay hands on me, everybody anointed me with oil, all the guest speakers. I carried their books. I carried, you know, I, I was a drop cloth girl. I was, uh, lay hands on me, you know, all of that. And that day came, didn't it? Yes. That day does come. It does. It the does gifts come. in you make way for themselves. That's right. And that day does come. And it's glorious because your foundation, Bishop, is the right. servant. Right. Servant, Servanthood. Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, he, the night of the Passover before he was taken, right. what did he say? Right. Peter said, what? You're going to wash my feet? He said, listen, if I don't wash your feet, then you have no place with me. And people say, wash my head, wash all of me, because I want to have place with you. And he said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life a and, ransom for many. Right. And that, and that right. is right. really the heart of a leader. That's right. That the leader oh, is, not to, is not the one to be served but rather serves. Right. And, and I see it like this. Some people it's so think good. that it's that, you know, when you're serving and let's say you start out and maybe you're an usher or greeter or whatever, but you have aspirations, you have a sense of calling maybe to teach 
or you have a prophetic gifting. You have some gifting or that uh, to, to do those things. And uh, when, when, the, when those doors begin to open and the gifts make way for themselves, it, it's not an elevation. It's simply a broadening of your platform. See, now, you, you know, in the context of my uh, being the housekeeper and vacuuming and doing that, mm -hmm. I had a small platform that I stood on serving a specific arena of need in the church. But then God broadened that platform and I started serving as a, 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 an elder in the church and it broadened the platform. And then I started a singles ministry in the church and it broadened the platform. It just, it helped me mm -hmm. to touch more people mm -hmm. and give access to serve more people, really, mm -hmm. is what it was. And now as a, as a lead pastor in the church, yes. as a bishop and a leader, uh, uh, over. pastoring over, pastoring uh, other leaders, yes. uh, pastors and prophets and apostles, mm -hmm. my responsibility and role is a shepherd to help minister to them, mm -hmm. to serve them. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, some people just have it backwards. It, it's not, right. the church world shouldn't be a corporate world. Right. It, it, you know, yeah, it's true that a lot of us have 501c3 corporations to relate to the state, but, but the church is a body. We relate first as brothers and sisters, and that's our primary relationship. That's right, that's right. And we're supposed to love and serve one another, that's regardless right. of whether you're the chief cook or the bottle maker or the bishop or whatever your calling or title is. Right. And so you, you, but you learn that well through service. So I served there for 18 years. The Lord released me, and then uh, we planted a church in Dunedin mm -hmm. and uh, started in my home with a handful of people. And God bless that ministry, mm -hmm. and we uh, served the community for uh, 14 years. And Pastor Lloyd blessed you. Pastor Lloyd released that's, us that's and very, blessed that's us. Important. I, I went to him. Uh, my wife and I did. We, mm -hmm. we we invited him to our home. It was the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Came to our home and mm -hmm. we told him what was in our hearts to do, and assured him first of all, Pastor, I would never do anything that would hurt the church that I just spent 18 years trying to Or build. hurt him. Or hurt him. Or his family. I, I loved him. I loved his family and did everything I could to support him while I was serving him. So he blessed you and he released you. That's the proper way. He, he prayed him. over us Praise and released the Lord. blessing It's over a blessing us. from your spiritual father. Right. You know, a lot of people in the church world, they want to be the boss. They don't want to wait the process, Bishop. And so they will start, the Bible calls it in Galatians 5, seditions. Mm -hmm. It's splitting churches up, right. okay? And saying, okay, I want you to come with me. I'm the leader now, God's released me, but they don't have the blessing of the leadership. That's not correct. Right. God would never begin another work when you hurt your leader that has been there for you. That's called rebellion. Right. And so I find it very um, uh, stable that you mentioned, you get the blessing of God. Right. You get the blessing of the man of God. And and you just didn't start a church. You know, a lot of people start home churches, you right. know. Mm -hmm. And we were taught it over the years, and you have to listen to this, beloved of God. A lot of home churches where, you know, prophets get in there and they start prophesying and they start milking the people for money and all that, and they don't have any covering, the people holding it. They don't, they're not accountable anywhere. They just, they're teaching error most of the time. Most, and God said, no, you know, you have to say, where do you come from? Where do you hail from? You know, um, when a prophet comes to town, just don't let them in your church. They'll hurt your cheek a lot of times. Find out where they come from. Can I call you pastor? Can I, where do you hail from? You know, how long you been in the ministry? Just don't show up and say, I'm a prophet, I have a word for you. Beware, 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 says the Lord of false prophets, where they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. That's right. So the balance is very important. And you as a bishop, you you know, you have learned and you're still training how to have balance. I notice I've been in, in your meetings, we're gonna talk about the ministerial sure. association. You're very balanced. You're very um, full of wisdom, and I thought that wisdom—it doesn't. That's not flattery. That's <clears throat> that's 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 complimenting. There's a difference. Flattery is is flattering someone because you want something from them. 
the compliment and the genuine compliment is it's all about the heart issue. And and you cannot get the anointing without going through the ropes. You cannot. Yeah, I will not, you cannot manufacture the anointing. No, you can't say, oh, manifest now, Lord. Come on, Jesus, manifest now. He you say, oh, yeah, go sit down. Go sit down. But then it just starts manifesting, which is the presence of God, which is the approval of God, because we're preaching the right thing and the peace of God. And so let's talk about, they're so good, such, so, so stable. Listen, find yourself a man of God, a fine, or a woman of God that you know is walking with God that's accountable somewhere else. Find, and sit under them. Especially if you don't have anywhere, just sit under them. The Bible says, know those that labor among you, especially if you're called of God from the get-go. If you seek me, you'll find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I'll be found of you, says the Lord, and I'll turn away your captivity. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, the beginning of that says, and you'll go and you'll pray unto me, and I'll hearken unto you. So as the bishop said, Bishop Nick, that he sought God, and you too can hear God. Nobody can speak to you like Jesus. He will speak comfortably to your heart. He will lead and guide you by his spirit, the Holy Spirit, into all truth. Nobody can speak to you like God. You can go from this church to that church to this church to that church. And you won't, You may hear what they have to say. And it may be God, it may not. But when you hear God for yourself, nobody can deny that to you. Nobody can say you didn't hear from God. Take what you heard and take it to your leader and say, this is what I heard from God. How do you feel in your spirit? Be accountable to a man or woman of God that you trust, beloved of God. And if you're a leader and you can't be trusted, you need to repent and be able to be trusted and stop hurting the sheep because that's why people don't want to go to church because they've been wounded by their leaders. Be kind, be full of the fruit of the spirit, be full of the, be full of, of the love of God. Love is kind, beloved. If we're gonna be leaders, we can't be beating the sheep. We have to feed the sheep, we have to help the sheep. Remember when we were getting started. Remember when a leader hurt us, how we felt. Well, we don't want to hurt people. We want to love people. We want to build them and get them to where they're headed to be an effectual leader, you know. And we were talking, you and I were talking, my friend, about the condition of the church. Yes. Let's talk about that, about another gospel. Galatians 1.8, Paul had, he, he had, he had, um, it's very strong in my heart, is, is, um, is Galatians, is, an, is when people preach another gospel, it wholly angers me because that's not my Jesus that I know. It's not your Jesus because you preach the truth. In Galatians 1.8, but though we are an angel from heaven, Paul said, Paul the apostle, verse 1, not of man, neither by, not of man, neither by man, but of Jesus Christ, the God, the Father who was raised from the dead. Verse 8, but though we are, were an angel from heaven, preach another gospel unto you other than the one you preached, we preached unto you, let him be accursed. And 2 Corinthians 11.4 says that beware of those that come to you preaching another Jesus. So there's going to be another Jesus being preached out there with false apostles, false pastors, false teachers, false evangelists, you know, and, 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 and they're out there. 2 Peter 2 talks about false brethren. They come in privately, they sneak in, and when I studied that years ago, Bishop, they come, the Bible says in Second Peter, when it talks about that, that they eat with you, all the while making merchandise of you. Mm -hmm. That's going to eat with you and telling how wonderful they are, and let's talk about, I mean, and all the while, they want your money, they want your sheep, they want your connections, they don't want you, right. they don't want God, they want them. Right. So that's a false ministry. Right. While they're eating with you, they're patting you on the back all the while that they're, they're in it for themselves and not in it from God. You know, let's talk about that. Well, and, and I've experienced too that uh, if, if, if there are any pastors out there that are listening to us uh, or those of you that are in church leadership and mm -hmm. you've experienced the pain of a church split. Mm -hmm. And it's like going through divorce in oh, family. Oh, it's awful. Uh, it's so hard to understand. There's a 
people are spiritualizing things that are happening and it's just hard to reconcile why and what's happening and all and uh, i've learned uh, in my in my own experience having seen it uh, at the church where i was an associate mm -hmm. and then having gone through it as a pastor mm -hmm. in the first church that i planted that there are times even when the people who are uh, I, I don't want to say wholly responsible for the split, but they're, they're the people who, who they've gotten disgruntled. There's something happened, and they're 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 upset. Uh, something's triggered something, Thanks. and they're offended, and they've not been able to reconcile it in their hearts. They don't reconcile it with the leadership of the church, mm -hmm. and so they believe that they're supposed to go off and start their own, right. and right. they they leave without the blessing. Mm -hmm. They leave without. Uh, uh, being sent, which is really the pattern in the scripture. You know, Acts 13 is really the pattern for people going out into ministry. Uh, Barnabas and Saul were working in the church in Antioch. They were serving. They were teachers. They were in the leadership of the church. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point in time, the Holy Spirit spoke to the group of leaders and said, separate to me Saul and Barnabas for the Barnabas and Saul for the work that I've called them to. Mm -hmm. And so the church fasted and prayed and laid hands on them mm -hmm. and then sent them out. And then when Barnabas and Saul completed their first mission journey, they came back to the church, they were accountable, they were reported, and they started serving again in the church. Mm -hmm. And see, that pattern is the the New Testament pattern for sending, okay. as opposed to being angry and upset offended talking to other people in your circle of influence sharing that offense defiling others who who aren't even aware of whatever circumstance it is that's offended you mm -hmm. and then rallying them to a cause and then leading them out and planting uh, another work uh, based on someone else's ministry and i rarely do those works uh, succeed because they're typically born out of offense and rebellion. Right, rebellion and witchcraft, and God doesn't bless that. It's, God it, doesn't bless no. that. And, and, and there, you know, there are times, I'm not saying that there are never times when you shouldn't leave the church. You right, know, right. If, the, if the pastor is not preaching the truth, right. if, if he's not uh, staying true to the Bible, if there are moral uh, issues, right. uh, to sin. if there's things like that, and they're not addressed and corrected and repented of, then the Lord may very well lead you out in order to lead you into somewhere else. But always he wants all of us to stay connected. He wants us to be a part of the church as imperfect as it is because we're, we're made of human beings. We're, we're fallible. All of us, pastors, bishops, prophets, everybody has stuff that God's working on in their lives. That's right. We're human vessels. That's well, right. And, and we're, in the, we're in the process. We're in the process of being perfected, and it won't be completed until the day we see Jesus. That's right. And so while we're in that process, we need to you know, walk with humility and love and yeah. serve and yeah. confess and, and, love people. and do what uh, God, the Word, tells us to do. But it, And you brought up the, the topic of, of the concern for the church as a whole. And mm -hmm. I, I do want to address this because... Uh, in the past a few weeks, a couple of months, recently, as recent as last weekend, uh, a very public um, worship leader, someone who'd written a lot of songs for Hillsong Church in Australia, he was a part of their original worship team, uh, went on his Twitter and uh, denied his faith, said he was walking away. Uh, and, and he gave a host of reasons. Uh, all the pastors that have fallen, all the contradictions in the Bible, all the, uh, where are the miracles? Uh, um, uh, why are all these different translations? And he listed these host of, of reasons and, and kept saying, and no one's talking about it. No one's talking about that. No one's talking about that. We talk about it. Well, and that's the point. Uh, another leader, um, uh, Josh Grogan, who wrote the book, uh, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, that was really popular uh, in youth ministries back, you know, 15, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Another one who, a couple of months ago, publicly denied his faith. And 
it became it, it grieved my spirit yeah, first of all when when someone who's in leadership in and uh, is uh, has the limelight so to speak where they, they have a circle of influence and it's a large circle of influence that God gave them because of the gifts that God imparted to them you couldn't write a song of worship that would inspire if the Holy Spirit didn't inspire you. That's right. You couldn't write a book that would make a difference and help uh, bring some correction to something culturally and that it was used to do that. Yeah. You couldn't do that if the Holy Spirit didn't inspire you. So God gave you the gift to, to uh, and then gave you the platform and then gave you influence by um, giving it a uh, favor with people and ministries and now you take that favor you take that influence that you have and now you're going to turn it against God and against God's people now first of all the bait of Satan offense uh, yes it, it, whatever and, and uh, they haven't gone into detail about uh, what kind of cri more, uh, faith crisis they may have had and, and, and I found that in many cases where people have been alienated from the church, that something happens in their life that they can't reconcile. The, you know, Jesus talks about, you know, the sower of seed and uh, some are scattered in, in places where the, where the uh, uh, crows come and take the seed, right, you know, right. and, uh, and, and he talks about the, the vicissitudes, the troubles, the challenges of life sometimes cause people to uh, uh, walk away from the faith. And I find that most often that's what happens. Something happened. A child dies, a, a, a divorce, uh, uh, someone who they esteemed highly in leadership has a moral failure or something. A betrayal of a person. A betrayal, friend. yes. That will almost kill a person, is a betrayal of a, someone they trust. Right. So what do you do with that? Well, in these cases, they, they've come to the place of saying, well, if that's not true, then maybe none of it's true, and they turn away and they walk away from their faith. And it's one thing, and the scriptures tells us in latter days that there will be doctrines of demons that will be taught that even the very elect will be deceived. Yes, 1 Timothy 4.1. And, and it is, it is a, a sign of the times that it's happening. But why walk away and make a big public deal about it. And I just, you don't understand what you're doing because Jesus said it would be better that a millstone tied around your neck and thrown in the sea if you cause one of these little ones to fall away. And there are people who are young in the faith who, who look to you as a leader, as an influencer, and now you're using your influence to turn them away from Jesus and away from the faith. That's a very dangerous thing. That will be that will bring consequences from God because significant. The, the word of God is clear. We know that we're not judging. We're just bringing out a point here because many people, young influential youngsters, they don't know what's right or wrong yet. The Bible is clear and says if if you lead a child, you know, the wrong way. And if, you, if you're in the leadership in the limelight and you, you know, nobody gets away with anything. If, no. we, if we get mixed up, we have to pray for that person. But to get up, like you said, and, and influence the young one. That's right. You know, that it is far better to have never known the Lord right. than to know him and walk away from him. That's right. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God, of the living God. So we have to walk circumspectly, beloved of God. We have to, um, the enemy worked on those people. It didn't start with one thought. No. It was a long time coming. I'm uh, sure it was a process. Uh, it was a process. So the importance of staying close to God, staying in unity with the Lord, you know, staying, say, Lord, I, you know, we're in a process, we're in a process, but Lord, don't let there be any casualties. Restore these people, Lord. Cause them to repent, you know, but don't allow them to keep spewing out their unbelief and their poison on, on the youngsters right. that don't know any better with such a high-profile ministry as that. Right. Because there are tremendous consequences to that. That's on right. top of the rebellion mm -hmm. is 
terrible, terrible consequences. Well, and I'd like to just talk for a moment about um, how you can guard yourself mm -hmm. uh, when you hear this kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, when you're in a church and, and mm -hmm. your pastor has a moral failure, uh, when you're confronted with a crisis in life and you pray and you pray and you pray and you get no answer that you anticipate or expect. And how do you do when your faith is, what do you do when your faith is shaken? It is critically important to build a foundation of understanding the teaching of scripture, knowing the doctrines, the teachings of scripture. Yes. You, you have to study the word. And, and for me, it started, first of all, yes. by being in a Bible teaching church. Now, I, I'm going to say some things. Um, that might sound like I'm judging other churches and it is not my heart to do that. No, we're not. But, but I want you to understand that there are churches that teach the Bible and will teach the foundational principles of the Bible, the doctrines, building one upon another upon another so you have a, a sure understanding of what the Bible teaches. And that's important for you so that, first of all, if you're confronted with someone who believes differently, you can give a ready defense, Peter says. You can defend your faith, why you believe what you believe. Uh, and that, that to me starts with, first of all, having a clear understanding that the Bible is God's word. It is the place and infallible truth that you can find. Inspired of God. Inspired by God. By, you know, written when, by holy men. You, you think, think about it written over 1,600 year people period by 40 different authors, people from varying different lifestyles, totally, totally uh, 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 from, from uh, uh, peasants and, and, and uh, you know, farmers and kings and warriors Fish, fishermen. and fishermen and tax collector and, you know, all of these people from various levels of society, education, culture, and yet, and at different times, war and peace, all these different situations, and yet dealing with the most controversial of subjects, and yet there's one unified story from beginning to end. Isn't that something? So when you consider the internal unity of the Bible, when you consider the, the prophetic words that were prophesied hundreds of years before the events took place, and then they were fulfilled exactly as they were written hundreds of years later, how could that possibly happen? The, it, it, it's not possible by human reason. And the current events in Israel and everything that's going on in Israel, and, and it, nobody, no man could ever write right. like the word of God. That's right. And, and we're, like you say, infallible with a silver thread running or a blood thread running from Genesis to Revelation and, and current events. And it's just, this God has written this word and we are told in 2 Timothy 2.15, let me read it to you. Say, oh, I don't need to study. I could just listen to my Bible app. No. Get your paper Bible. Bring a notepad to church, beloved of God. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. God likes when we study. He pours more of himself into us. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, right, right, rightly dividing the word of truth. God wants us to study. So when we hear the error, we know the difference. Something will go off in our spirit, and we're like, no, nah, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. John 3, 3, Galatians 2, 20. So Christ lives in us. It's no longer I that live. John 3, 30. He might increase, and I might decrease. So God says, if you lay down your life, you'll find it. You'll, lose, you'll find it. If you hold on to your life, we'll lose it. So how do we become the champion? We're not the champion, he's the champion. We are to lay down our life, self-man, and allow Jesus to live through us in this earth. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in us. So, you know, let's talk about the self-made books and self-confidence and low self-esteem 
And we have about 15 minutes left. Let's cover that because that's not the gospel. No, it's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. The gospel no. is not putting self on the throne. It's putting Jesus on the throne and self off the throne with all its fleshly appetites and its big mansions and its, you know, speed boats. And yet we could have all that, but not when it has us. God, Jesus said you can't serve God and money. You'll either love one and hate the other. That's and right. when we love money, it's the root of all evil. We won't put God first. Right. Let's right. talk about that, right. the self-made gospel and all of that. Well, and if I could just finish the yes, thought of course, of uh, course. about the uh, staying, uh, studying the word here. Mm -hmm. when, when you're, uh, in order to grow in your understanding so that you won't be shaken when times of crisis come, mm -hmm. it's important for you to study and how you do that, mm -hmm. first of all, is get into a church that teaches the Bible where where they say open up your Bibles turn to this place and then they start teaching from there there's a there's a uh, a pattern in a lot of churches and, and there's some very big churches where uh, it's it's a very uh, controlled programmed environment you know we've got that we're gonna have three songs and we're gonna have this video and we're gonna make these announcements and then we're gonna get up and we're gonna give a talk and then uh, we're gonna sing another song and then we're gonna go home. And you know, the talk may be uh, very, uh, you know, might have biblical applications to it, but is there the study of scripture? Is there the opening up of the Bible and reading from the Bible and teaching what the words mean and, and, and conveying the, what it means to us today and then how do I apply it? You wanna be in a Bible teaching church. You want to be then also in a place where you can do study in small group application, where you're a part of a small group Bible study. Because the more word you get in and the more confident you get in so that you can read and study, listen to Ann's programs every week. She's, mm -hmm. she's, a, she's filled with the word of mm -hmm. God and she teaches the Bible. Mm -hmm. Find those Bible studies locally through your local it's through free. your church it's free. It's online um, but make sure that you're connecting with people who mm -hmm. are solid who are biblical mm -hmm. who have reputation mm -hmm. who and and one of my big deals you know as a bishop and a pastor I don't let anybody just come and speak at my church. Oh, no, you don't. I, I don't let anybody come and, and, and then say, you know, I, I want to be a, a, a leader, a, a small group leader. Uh, wonderful. Uh, I need to know who you are. That's right. I, I need to know where you've been. I need to know a little bit about your background. Mm -hmm. I need to know if you're, if you're a, an itinerant minister, you go to churches, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you, you're looking for opportunity to mm -hmm. speak in churches. Mm -hmm. I need to know who's mm -hmm. your pastor. Mm -hmm. Who are you accountable mm -hmm. to? Is there someone who speaks into your life? Mm -hmm. Do you have letters of recommendation from people that are noteworthy? Mm -hmm. See, I, I want to know that you can be trusted because I'm responsible That's right. for what the sheep in my flock That's right. uh, are, are, are fed. That's right. And so, and this goes into this whole idea of accountability, both on a leadership level and also as a, a, a person, a, a servant of the Lord. Uh, you need to be tied into a local church you need to be accountable and committed and in covenant in our church we do membership covenants yes yes because we we believe that yes. everything in the kingdom is done by covenant yes you, the family it's all it's yes. covenant relationship yes. you know you got saved because you entered into covenant with the lord jesus christ yes. it's a blood covenant that you entered into with the lord your marriage is a covenant relationship between you and the Lord and your spouse. Mm -hmm. it, it's everything I am and everything I have I give to you. Everything you are and everything you have I receive from you. We're no longer two, but we're one. And there's protection in that. It's not only that you can, it's not about numbers in your church. No. It's about, it's to, the, it's to, the, it's to your advantage because you're protected. This man of God and his leadership staff and his wife will protect you if you go to this flock. Because it's like, if you get in trouble, counsel is there. You get in a fix, bishop is there. You have to go to the hospital, bishop will come, or a leader will come. Right. It's protection, right. beloved of God. It's not bondage, it's freedom. And it's, it, it is, the whole idea is that we walk alongside one another mm -hmm. in order to strengthen and encourage, 
so that you can fulfill your God ordained purpose in life. And all of us go through challenging times. I do as well. And you know what? I have people I can call. Praise the Lord. I, I'm submitted. I, I, I'm not only the bishop of an mm -hmm. as association, mm -hmm. but I'm also a part of another association mm -hmm. that has a bishop, mm -hmm. and so I'm submitted there. And mm -hmm. I am submitted to local leadership as mm -hmm. well, because one no one should be an entity unto themselves. So as a, as a believer, mm -hmm. you need to be in covenant relationship with the local body. As a leader, you need to be in covenant relationship with some covering organization mm -hmm. where you can be ministered to, mm -hmm. you can have access, but there could be accountability, transparency, mm -hmm. people can speak into your life, mm -hmm. and you have access to resources mm -hmm. of people who've been in ministry. Mm -hmm. So those are important things, and that's what helps us in these times when right. things are happening right. that are inexplicable. It's safe. It's a safe place. Yes, that's exactly right. New Hope. New Hope Church. New Palm Hope Harbor. Church, Palm Harbor. And we have about five minutes left. Tell them how that this has been so good, so stable. God sends the best to this ministry. I'm really humbled, you know. I mean, he just sent, he tells me, invite this one, invite that one. And sometimes I meet people just in, for a moment. And I, I hear the voice of God and they say yes. And this man of God said yes today. And um, I honor him. Tell them how they could reach you. Sure. Uh, past, I call you Pastor Nick, yeah. really Bishop. And that's, how, that's yeah. how most people yeah. know me. Um, my uh, our church is New Hope Church in Palm Harbor, Florida, and uh, we yes in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, our website is www.newhopepalmharbor.com. Newhopepalmharbor.com. We have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. and uh, we are located at 455 Revere Road in Palm Harbor. Mm -hmm. And we're you know, we have a, we do a Saturday night service and a Sunday morning service, mm -hmm. and we're a church where. We, we invite the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to be the Lord of every moment that we're together. Mm -hmm. uh, our worship is spirit-filled, spirit-led worship. We have a tremendous worship team. And it's a place where it's, you're not going to see a lot of dazzling lights and smoke on the stage. Uh, and I'm not condemning anybody who uses those things to you know, get the attention of people. Uh, we're, we're a little bit more uh, plain in that regard. We have wonderful instrumentation and beautiful vocals, but we worship Jesus. We worship. And then we get into the Word of God. And I teach the Word of God. I've been in a series for the past several weeks on um, the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And wanting people to understand the vital importance of the Spirit-led, Spirit-filled, Spirit-empowered life. Hallelujah. And God wants you to know yes. the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. So you encounter him in the scriptures, and then you set yourself up for a daily encounter with him every day. Praise the Lord. So if you want to know more, we have two minutes left. This beautiful program, the hour goes so quickly. If you want to know more, telephone number, you have an office number? Sure. Uh, you can reach us at 727-789-4673. Mm -hmm. 727-789-4673. Four six seven three. Hope. So uh, you can call the, the office, and uh, we'll be glad to get back with you. You can email me personally if you would like to, mm -hmm. Nick at NewHopePalmHarbor.com. Nick at NewHopePalmHarbor.com. I'd love to get to know you, correspond with you, and pray God's very best blessings for you. This has been so wonderful. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you so my much. Joy. So my joy is my honor to have a bishop so stable and so humble and so full of love and ellie his wife is just the same she's a beautiful woman of god thank you thank you thank you for the time you spent with us we don't take it lightly ann finkelman shoshana rose radio program find us on youtube hit the subscribe button hit the like on the bottom of this video you won't be disappointed find me on facebook go to new hope what time really quick saturday evening saturday at six sunday at 10 a.m Saturday at 6, Sunday at 10 a.m. I love you more and more. My honor, man of God, that you've taken time. This is your day off, and you've taken time to be with us. My blessing. Thank you. Our blessing, our honor for you. That's why we do this. I love you more and more. Mwah. See you soon, okay? Don't forget, tell your friends. Find us on Facebook. Pastor Nick, 
New Hope Church, Palm Harbor. Learn more about God. Learn more about the Holy Spirit. I've been there. Very stable. You will love it. You won't be hurt there. He will protect you in the ways of God. Hallelujah. We'll see you soon. Love you more and more. Bye-bye.